Good morning, YouTube. So today, Rob on Strange Journey. Today, we're gonna test out a couple of automotive battery heaters. Got a couple off Amazon. I'll post some links in the subscription description. I got a special little thermal imaging camera. We're going to see how it heats these puppies up, how many watts they use. And then after we get through the initial tests, we'll install it in the truck and see real world what all that means. Let me show you what I got. So that's the two we're going to test today and install on the truck and create the ultimate wintertime tow vehicle. Definitely a necessity for RV life. We got this one here. It wraps around the battery. And this one here is going to go underneath the battery. They both pull about 60 watts, it says. Let's test them out. Let's see how hot they get. Make sure they work. This one that goes under the batteries, you can see, we'll do the table out here, about 35 degrees outside right now. Pad, and it has a thermostat, so when I had it inside, it uh, wouldn't turn on because it was, you know, like 75 inside the house. So that's kind of cool. It's got a thermostat, but it's heated up to about 100 degrees. And you can see right there the amount of watts it's pulling. The watts are going on and off, so it hovers between 60 and zero. It just keeps flickering back and forth. So it's only going to max out at 60 watts. And the pad's getting up to 100 degrees. I'll do a test on the other one and then we'll install them in the truck and see in real world what this all means. And here we got the one that wraps around the battery. Let's plug her in and give her a shot. This one is pulling 54 watts. So pretty close to what that one was. We'll come back in about 20 minutes and see, uh, see how hot it is. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Let's check on it. See how this one's doing. You can see we're still pulling about 54 watts, so right about in that 60 watt threshold. It looks like the hot spots are in about the 120 range. You can see there, there's the one that wraps around 125 degrees. Interesting. So about 20% warmer than that guy over there. This one gets to, and this one wraps around. That one goes on the bottom, so. It'll be interesting to see how that temperature difference um, affects the battery in the real world. Now that we finished testing, let's get them on the truck and uh, probably wait till tomorrow when it's nice and cold out. Plug it in about two hours early. That's usually about when I plug in the block heater. And we'll see after a couple hours how it affected the batteries. We got both the tank heaters here. We got this guy that goes underneath the battery. I'm gonna put that on. I got two batteries. I'm gonna put this on the far left battery because I feel like this one does the majority of the work since it's closer to the starter. I could be completely wrong. And then we got this guy that wraps around the battery. I kind of have higher hopes for this one because in testing, it got hotter and I, the way it goes around the battery on three corners, I feel like it's gonna be more effective, but who knows? Definitely think I need to get the battery out to fit this guy around it, which sucks. Let's go old school some pliers, huh? Put it on just like that so that cord will be nice and close to go down there. Yeah, I want to kind of maybe put a zip tie around it too to kind of really hold it, hold it on there from shimmering around. Probably don't need it, but what the heck. show you what I got going on here. So you can see I zip, put a zip tie around the middle of this heater just to hold it nice and tight against the battery. I don't want it getting away from the battery. Hopefully it didn't hurt the heater at all. We'll find out in the testing. Get this guy buckled up, move on to the next. And I'm putting some battery heaters in the truck for the truck batteries. Oh, I'm keeping the batteries. I'm putting the, these heater, heating pads on them. Distilled water and salt, yes. Isn't that crazy? Oh, uh, it's pretty amazing. I did not think it would work. I mean, I've topped my wa batteries off with distilled water before. Yeah. But but uh, the here, if you just use water, it's still free. That's the, one of the problems. That's, yeah, last year up in Montana, if it got below zero, my truck wouldn't start. I heard at uh, 32 degrees, they've lost like 30% of their power and at zero degrees, I think it's, it's like 60% of their, their wattage is gone. Next hard thing, I gotta route the electrical wires down through. The freaking thing is like right, this bar right here, right in the way.
So we'll start with this feller here. I think I'm gonna route it around over here and down. So if I go closer to the engine, it's hot. It's hot. It's all the radiator lines and turbo lines and all that kind of fun drama. Let's see how we want to do this side. This one's gonna have a much longer trip over. So, kind of thinking down through the front there, out into the bumper area, because then there's a nice straight shot from there, so I'll take a look under there. All right, so now we're gonna take this, go in front of the radiator area. I wonder if I can let her off going inside here, or something like that. Let's run that other one down there and see what happens. Perfect. These guys come right about to the same spot where all this can touch, so we just gotta get a little adapter for the all right, so total time it's been plugged in has been about two hours and 40 minutes. Woo, it's cool out. Ah, let's see what they're at. Just kind of give you a three hour benchmark. Maybe the battery heaters work slower and you have to have them plugged in longer. Anyways, 23 degrees out. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, right where that white arrow's at in the middle is the very top temperature. So we got about 33 degrees on top of the battery. Terminal area, interesting, that's at 50 degrees. Middle terminal area, check this side, 50 degrees. And just as a benchmark, let's do a random side item here. Right about there, the uh, alternator is 22 degrees. So 22, middle of the top of the battery is 36, and terminals are almost 50 degrees. So that's the battery that has the heater that wraps around it. You see there, it's showing about 123 degrees at the hottest spot. See a little red one? It's at the very hottest spot it's measuring, so about 120 degrees. So that's what we had in testing. Let's go over and look at the battery that has the charger underneath it. Middle of the battery, we're putting about 32 degrees. Sides of the battery, hottest spot sides, 55 degrees. So it's that one works too, it's eating it up. Let's see the terminal area. Terminals on this one are less warm. We're looking at about 30 degrees compared to 50 on the other one. What about this terminal? Yeah, about 35 degrees. Here's a total view of the engine. As you can see, a bunch, most of the random spots on the engine are 21 degrees. The battery heaters, they're working, they're doing their job. They got the battery up anywhere from 35 to 50 degrees, depending on the spot. I did have an idea of wrapping it in insulation, like battery insulation. Keep an eye out. I might have to order something off Amazon. I'm kind of got to research what I think would be best, but I think that would be the ultimate complement to these battery heaters is to have the insulation wrapped around to retain all that heat. Probably work a lot better. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this video out, show you my results right now, because it's winter time and people may be looking for this kind of stuff. But my final verdict on these battery heaters is the one that wraps around I think works better than the one that goes underneath, but the one that wraps around takes more room up around the battery. So if you lack room there, you're gonna want the uh, one that goes underneath and it works pretty darn good too, as you can see in the results. I mean, just, I think the wraparound one look, works a little bit better, but uh, they both are definitely doing their job. I'm gonna give the wraparound one the win, but the one that goes under the battery, kicking butt too. And the nice thing about that one is it has a thermostat on it. So it's not gonna just constantly keep heating. The wraparound one, it's gonna keep heating as long as it's plugged in. So one more final thought I had, the one that goes on the bottom might be better for like RV batteries because you can leave it plugged in all the time and the thermostat will kick it on and off when it gets cold. So it won't be running all the time. The wraparound one, I'm pretty sure that's just gonna run all the time as long as it's plugged in. So if you're not gonna monitor it, if you got it plugged into something like an RV battery where you don't wanna have to pay attention, the one that goes on the bottom, that's your best bet. I'd appreciate a like, maybe even a subscribe. It's cool to see uh, new people come along. And I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching.